Hey, how's it going YouTube? This is your boy Chosen and welcome back to another discussion video. Now today's video is something I've wanted to talk about for a while now as for those who've seen my videos know that I've been hinting at this topic and that's how the legendary signing could slowly make their relevancy return into the franchise. For those who have no idea what I'm talking about, well the hints have been shown throughout not just the manga but the anime as well. The manga mostly covers Jiraiya, I guess, and Tsunade's side whereas the anime mostly covers Orochimaru's. I also want to point out that when I say the legendary signing could make their return this doesn't mean all at the same time. I mean, let's look at Kashin Koji's impact until now. Koji has had one of the biggest impacts towards Nishiki's defeat. He helped Sasuke find out the whereabouts of the Ten Tails, crashed the airship that Kawaki was in, which essentially brought him to Konoha, which also changed his whole perspective on life, and brought out Ishiki through Jigen, which gave Naruto and Sasuke the chance to take him out. On top of this, he's still not dead yet. With the model betraying him, it's really hard to say where he could have ran off to, so out of all the three Sanin, he's probably the most unpredicting as of right now, based off of what just happened the last time we saw him. But in the manga, he's had the most impact compared to all three of them. Tsunade hasn't even been shown yet and Orochimaru, like I said, hasn't done anything in the manga, but has had hints about what his future could hold to the plot in the anime. The few things I can say about Koji though that I really hope happens is that maybe during the end of a chapter, Kashin Koji comes face to face with Naruto and we actually don't get the reunion we all thought of. Remember guys, Jiraiya is dead. His personality is dead. This character, if you look at personality only, is completely different. He isn't gonna slow-mo run to Naruto with sadness and sorrow playing in the background. Koji's gonna feel nothing after seeing Naruto, but it probably won't be the same way from Naruto's perspective. And honestly, I, I hope Tsunade encounters him as well. We know Tsunade loved Jiraiya, whether you want to see it as a love interest, because I know a lot of people claimed it at the time, or just someone she sees as a brother. It'd be great to see her reaction. And lastly, Kashin Koji attempting to get revenge on Amado. During the Shiki vs Koji fight, a heartbreaking review was brought on to us in Koji that Amado completely lied to him and in a way set him up to die after bringing out Ishiki by killing Jigen. My guess is Amado lied to Kashin and convinced him that his purpose was to save the world by destroying Earth's biggest threat, being Ishiki. I believe that Amado intentionally didn't tell Kashin just how powerful Ishiki really was. And because of this, Koji completely underestimated him which literally almost killed the guy. I wouldn't be surprised if Koji makes his way onto Konoha in an attempt to get revenge. We know that he's easily able to pass through Konoha's sensory barrier due to him basically being the clone of Jiraiya. So it is definitely possible and could happen. Now finally for Tsunade, which has been the least talked about character out of all the three within the community. The reason as to why I believe Tsunade could possibly play a role in the story is due to the fact that Kodachi heavily hinted at the 100 healing mark possibly having a connection to the Karma Seal. This was brought up in Boruto chapter 35 where Sarada mentions how her mom's forehead mark looks like Boruto's Karma Seal. The next gen obviously don't know what it is since they've never seen it in action but Naruto goes on to say that it's a jutsu that can be used as a trump card and that even the fifth Hokage has one as well. Kwaki goes on to say that this connection is a far stretch, seeing as how its shape is found everywhere. But Miski corrects him by stating that there's actually a lengthy history revolving the 100 healing mark. That there's a lot about it we don't understand yet. Boruto then goes on to bring up the 5th Hokage again. I wonder why he did that. In chapter 36, Sarada asks Sakura about the 100 healing mark and she goes on to say that according to Lady Tsunade, it's a jutsu that existed for a very long time, during the age of the Sage of Six Path. And as of right now, this is where we are put on hold with the connection between the two marks. Now most may not realize this but one this could potentially mean there is more to the 100 healing mark in terms of power that both Sakura and Lady Tsunade have not tapped into yet and maybe the history of the karma seal and the 100 healing mark and how it became to be could have some kind of connection. Sakura indirectly basically said Tsunade is more knowledgeable about this topic. She talks to Sarada about its history as if she's not too sure and like she said it was Tsunade who taught her about the seal and its history so if they are gonna ask anyone about it well it's rather gonna be Orochimaru or Tsunade but since Orochimaru Maru already has his purpose within the plot, I feel like it'd be better if they have Tsunade discuss this, seeing as how she was the first person to introduce this seal. And last but definitely not least, we have Orochimaru, and for those who've read and watched both manga and anime, you can probably already guess what's up with him. I made a video last month discussing Mitsuki's stage mode and debating if Mitsuki actually has a connection to Tonetti in any way. In one part of the video, I talked about how I don't think Mitsuki himself has any connection to Tonetti, but instead, Orochimaru. I think Orochimaru is somehow catching on to Tonetti's plan with Boruto and is trying to figure out why he chose to give him the Jugon. Obviously, Naruto isn't gonna let Orochimaru get near his son, so what's the best way for Orochimaru to get close to Boruto? Well, if you guess, to create a synthetic human child with godly powers to befriend the Hokage's son in order to possibly figure out Tonetti's true plan, then yeah, you're probably right. And to back this whole claim up, when Mitsuki first activated Sage Mode and stole the scroll Orochimaru was holding, this was all intentional, as it was revealed to us after 
after by log on Orochimaru's conversation. Orochimaru wanted Miski to see what was inside of the scroll, and inside of it was Boruto. Why would Orochimaru do that? What would he get out of forcing an emotional connection with Boruto? Well, it's all for the sake of his research, which he brings up multiple times. He even goes as far as to say that if anyone ever comes close to discovering Miski's true purpose, he'd self-destruct. Why is it that big of a deal for Orochimaru to hide his true intentions with Mitsuki? Unless it revolved around something so big, like a fucking Otsutsuki. I know the manga has barely touched this, but in the anime, all these points I've been making have been shown a few times. I may not be right on the ball with this one, who knows, but I'm confident that at least part of what I'm saying is 100% true. Yes, Mitsuki now has a real emotional connection to his friends and is keen on finding his own true path as a ninja, but the goal for Orochimaru has stayed the same. That's the point of doing all of this. Yeah, it's cool to see his son go out there and live a normal life, but if, for example, Boruto were to randomly die tomorrow, 100% Orochimaru is taking Mitsuki out of the leaf. He has no reason to keep him there. If you were to tell me two years ago that the legendary Sani were going to return to the franchise in a pretty relevant way, I'd probably think you're full of shit because I just wouldn't be able to see why or how this could be the case. But now as more plot points get introduced as months go by, slowly over time it's starting to make a bit of sense and I do hope after this arc and you know after two or three more chapters they get back to discussing the connection with the hunter healing mark and Boruto's karma seal. Seeing as how with Naruto and Sasuke both losing their six path abilities, there's no one to stop a more fully developed stronger Boruto if Momochiki takes over. They need to find out the history of the karma seal further understand how vessels really work, maybe through Rochimaru, which is another good point, and with Kashin Koji alive, the writers clearly still have a purpose for him which is going to be revealed to us later on, whatever that is. And that, ladies and gents, is the end of today's video. I thank you guys for watching all the way until the end, and I'll catch you on the next one.